together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Let us pray our prayer of invocation. All wise and eternal creator, our our father, daddy, mother God, we come before you this morning, oh God, just to say thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for holding us in the hollows of your hand. And we ask, oh God, that you have your way in this worship experience, oh God, that we will not leave this experience like we came, but we're going to leave excited and to ready to run on to see what the end is going to be. It is in the marvelous, the magnificent, and miracle-working name of Jesus Christ, our healer, our redeemer, our helper, and our friend that we pray. All of God's children said, amen, amen, and amen. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth on today.
Amen. Aren't you grateful that the Lord never gave up on you? Amen. That you can testify and declare that God uh, never gave up on you. When you wanted to give up on yourself, the Lord continued to stay faithful. And you're here today. And your declaration is, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. And so we celebrate today. We rejoice in the goodness of the Lord and all that God has done as we just continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. We declare that this is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and are glad in it. And so as we come to celebrate today, as we come giving God praise, honor, and glory, we indeed welcome you to this worship experience, this 11 a.m. worship experience at the New Calvary Baptist Church. We hope and pray that something meaningful, that something significant, that something powerful blesses your worship experience, that you might be reminded that God continues to lead and deliver, and God never gives up on us. That if this moment you think, or oh, God is leading you to be a part of the New Calvary worship service, a worship family, uh, and the church family, regardless of location, uh, you feel led, we want you to go with that feeling. Amen. And know that this is a wonderful church filled with wonderful people because we serve a wonderful God. And it does not matter how you make your way, it is still virtually true that all roads lead to New Calvary. Amen. We are grateful for your presence on this day. Just want to send uh, some information to you as we continue to move forward for the news of the day, for the news of the week for New Calvary Baptist Church. We are grateful for everybody who shared uh, in our park and praise and our Mother's Day celebration on last Sunday. It was so good to see so many people, and we hope and pray that God continued uh, to bless you throughout that day and your Mother's Day celebration, and all uh, was indeed well. We are very, very thankful for all those who continue to work tirelessly to make those functions possible. Grateful for our outstanding choir, grateful for our AV ministry, grateful for Doc Christian and all of his setup and all of his work. And so we are just incredibly thankful to all of you who continue to make your way out. We are excited as we prepare, beloved, to share in the 86th anniversary of the New Calvary Baptist Church next week as we celebrate uh, 86 years. Amen of celebrating here at New Calvary, doing the ministry and doing the work of New Calvary Baptist Church. This is going to be a virtual celebration and take place on May the 23rd. They're planning uh, and continuing to move forward and we are looking forward to sharing with my friend and brother, the Reverend Dr. Vernon C. Walton, pastor of the First Baptist Church in Vienna, Virginia. It will be a wonderful and awesome time in the Lord. Uh, so please Please make sure that you are signing in and tuning in and uh, being a part of what we believe is going to be a wonderful celebration in terms of what God has done in terms of 86 years of ministry here at New Calvary. We are continuing to be excited about the Women's Connection. Uh, the Women's Connection Book Club meeting is going to take place. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to give you some very important dates, going to share some dates with you uh, as the book club, as the Women's Connected Club. They're going to share uh, in uh, this uh, virtual sharing, um, virtual study, even, listen to me, even if you don't have the book, it's going to be a blessing for you, I believe. It's going to really be a blessing, so make sure you sign on just the same. Uh, and so uh, mark your calendars uh, as Do Reverend Dr. Daniel Bahuro is going to be the facilitator and share uh, with the group uh, May, Saturday, May the 22nd, uh, then June the 19th, and then July 17th. All of those dates are Saturdays at 10 a.m., and they will be via Zoom. Please. 
get in contact with the church office for the meeting ID and further information and further details on um, the group if you need those details. But we believe uh, that it was a wonderful start uh, to uh, their group gathering, and we believe it's just going to continue and see what God has in store. Uh, I want to just spend a special thanks to the Brotherhood Ministry uh, who shared this past Saturday, and they uh, continue to move in the legacy of doing church differently because this past Saturday they had a socially distant and safe parking lot gathering. And so I'm just grateful for President Carlos uh, Adams and all of those who creatively came up with a way to come together and fellowship and share. Uh, and so if you are interested in sharing with the Brotherhood Ministry, please get in contact with the church office for further details. Uh, if you have those who are promoted or being promoted or graduating this year, and they need applications for scholarships for New Calvary, please have them uh, contact the church office. They can come pick those up or they can do those electronically, but they uh, will, the promotion Sunday will take place on June the 27th at 10 a.m. and the applications must be received no later than Wednesday, June the 16th at 2 p.m. So that you can stop by the church office or pick those up electronically, but we do want to celebrate all of those graduates and all of those who are being promoted and going forward in their dreams and pursuits of academic excellence. Uh, to that point, scholarships, uh, applications, uh, make sure that you have them in um, on or before uh, the deadline so that we might continue to um, submit your packet for uh, scholarship committee 2021, that you would have your submit those packets in care of scholarship committee, uh, committee 2021. High school graduates, uh, we're doing something a little bit uh, different for you guys um, because of um, the COVID and because of the social distancing, you can include an unofficial transcript for your high school uh, record uh, and the acceptance letter or copy of the acceptance letter of the college and the university that you will be attending in the fall. We know it can be an arduous task trying to get the transcript from your high school, but right now you can get an unofficial copy of that and the acceptance letter, copy of the acceptance letter. Uh, and continuing students need only to send a copy of their unofficial transcripts from their university. If you have any additional questions, you can get in contact with the church office, uh, or if you have contact with Sister Renee Kirby, uh, you can ask and inquire of her as well. Please keep in mind of all of our giving. Uh, we continue uh, to thank you for all of your giving and your faithfulness. You can give uh, to New Calvary Baptist Church, 800 East Virginia Beach Boulevard, or you can go on uh, Give Lafay and make New Calvary your favorite place to give. Please make sure that you are telling people to continue to subscribe and like uh, all of New Calvary's social media pages as we continue to do this ministry in different forms. We we are continuing as God has continued to bless us uh, in our, ver our Bible study as we, First Baptist Church University Park and New Calvary Baptist Church have continued to partner and share. It has been a blessing as we have talked about real talk African-American spirituality. Christian spiritual formation, and we have been blessed as a result of that conversation, and we are looking forward uh, to sharing again. We're going to have a final installment. God just keeps revealing to us and showing some stuff up, and so we have a final installment. Uh, seven is a good number. Seven is not only the number of completion, but it's a good number for those of us who understand the history and legacy of the greatest fraternity that God has ever created, and so we understand uh, the importance of the number seven and so we are going to have our seventh and final Bible study this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time and 6.30 uh, Central Standard Time as we talk about understanding how we continue to spiritually discipline ourselves for the Christian spiritual formation as African Americans. There were three questions that we want you to uh, be prepared to just kind of respond and answer to uh, as we understand because we want to make sure that we are doing the best we can in helping us grow and learn and understand. Uh, and so the first question 
question is, what has affirmed, been affirmed for you in this uh, Bible study series? As we have done this series together now for the past six weeks, what has been affirmed in your faith statement? What has been affirmed in your belief and been reinforced uh, as you have shared? Uh, the other thing is, what has challenged you? The quest second question is, what has challenged you? What has caused you trouble in some of the discussions that we've had, some of the things that have caused you struggle to understand or to wrap your faith and your mind around. So what are the things that have affirmed you? What are the things that have challenged you? And what are the things that you are still wrestling with? Question number three, what are the things that you still wrestle with and you struggle with in uh, this series in which we're talking about, about your own spiritual formation? What are some of the things that you are wrestling with in regards to your own spiritual formation and development? And so we uh, want you to just kind of wrestle with those things and bring those to us uh, as we come to a culmination, as we wrap up uh, this understanding of spiritual formation, but also as we come to share and learn and dialogue with one another. Uh, we look forward uh, to continuing to share uh, with uh, those who are in faith and of faith and we continue to pray as we prepare our hearts and minds in this moment with our prayer list we pray for brother George Cooper we are praying for sister Nellie Yellity we are praying for sister Cynthia Hannah praying for brother Paul Harris uh, who is the brother of Deacon Chavis Harris we're praying for Kishela Roberts who is the niece of trustee Helen Willis praying for sister Brenda Morris praying for Leonthea Miller, uh, praying for Patricia Ganey, praying for Sister LaBarbara Willis, and praying for both Joe and Dolores Turner, praying for Sister Willie Mae Turner, praying for Brother Willie Turner, and for Brother Harold Brown. We keep uh, that going to the cross as we continue to pray with one another. So won't you come and share with us in this moment as we go to the throne of grace and we evoke the Lord's presence in this place as we come uh, and if there are other concerns or prayers, put, please put them in the comment section so that our virtual minister can affirm and let you know that we are indeed praying with you in these particular times. So let us look to the Lord in a word of prayer as we go and bow together. Gracious God, how we love you and how we thank you for your power and for your grace. We're grateful, dear God, for all that you have done and all you continue to do in this place. God, we thank you for this morning's rising. Thank you for the opportunity to simply share with you that as we woke up this morning, we knew that we needed to make it to worship today. We knew, God, that we needed to make it to this particular place of worship and uh, come to this virtual spot that we might give you glory, praise, and honor. Thank you for one more opportunity. Thank you for one more day. Thank you for the moment that we can uh, rest uh, and come to understand what it means to get it right. The face, the strength, with strength and faithfulness to go back into the world and declare that there is still power in the name of Jesus. God, we're asking that you would watch over all of us and continue to bless us as we just share with one another, as we lift you up, as we call upon your name, as we look for your strength and understanding. Show us what you need us to do. Give us the direction that we need to go. God, that we might give you glory along the way. God, we pray for every situation. We pray for every every struggle we might be facing. Pray that you would keep us from hurt, harm, and danger, God, that you would continue to create the healing salve um, that a vaccine uh, cannot uh, deliver, but God, that only your grace and your power might be able to fix. God, keep us uh, in good health. Keep us in our minds together. Keep us, God, that we would go forward believing that you haven't brought us this far to leave us. Watch over us all, God, as we share with one another whatever prayers, whatever concerns are on our hearts. Hear us now as we continue to share in this moment. God, we pray for everybody on the sick and shut in list, but not only the list, but God, we pray for everyone who is on our heart, everybody, God, uh, who we think about, everybody who rests in our spirit, who we know needs to not only hear a word from you, but needs to experience and feel your presence as you continue to bless and continue to keep us. Lead us, God, in the direction that you would have us to go. And in all things, we would give your name, praise, honor, and glory. We ask, God, that you would bless this nation, bless this country, bless its leaders, God, and let us, God, continue to declare 
that we trust you along the way that in all things you've never you've never left us or forsaken us so we continue God to give you glory God watch over us as a church family watch over us as we worship and as we share together and remember us God in our coming out and our going in remember us God to give us the strength to climb every mountain and to endure every valley and we promise God in all things we will do our best to give your name the praise the honor and the glory and it is in the wonderful marvelous and majestic name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen say amen and say amen come on won't you put your likes up won't you put your hearts up and receive this choir that's going to bless us as they usher in the spirit as we prepare to hear God's word on today
God, how we thank you for this moment, how we bless your name, how we are grateful for the ways in which you show up and just reveal yourself to us. So God, now as we center ourselves, as we center ourselves for this moment of proclamation, we ask that your presence would be with us, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds, that we might be filled with your power, your anointing, your will might speak to our hearts, and that we might have the courage and the faith to respond, that in all things we would be transformed in the renewing of our minds, that we might be filled up until we want and need no more. Bless this, your instrument. Allow it to play your music of grace and mercy. Allow me that decreases, thou increases, thy these beautiful people might see less of me and more of thee. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of thy grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and let my will be lost in thine. It is in the wonderful, majestic, and marvelous name of Jesus, the people of God together say amen and amen. Come on, won't you thank God for this awesome choir that has blessed us and continues to bless us in his worship experience in this worship season. Uh, amen. Please know that as we continue to prepare ourselves for worship, we look to return on May 30th as we come back uh, to the sanctuary uh, in limited capacity. So make sure uh, that you are paying attention to the information that will be shared. Uh, we have a video that will be uh, posted and presented uh, that will give instruction, but we also want you to make sure uh, that you are reaching out uh, and being in contact uh, as soon as possible uh, so we can get uh, back to worship and sharing with one another. I call your attention to John chapter 8, uh, beginning at the first uh, verse, verses 1 through 11. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. It shares this way in the New International Version. It says, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. And at dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the ground and uh, group, stand before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, if any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And at this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Uh, verse 6 says, But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. 
I want to talk from this idea, this thought today, brothers and sisters, the cure for cancel culture. A cure for a cancel culture. This past week, you could not help but notice the Republican Party chose to vote and replace Congresswoman Elizabeth Cheney, a representative from Wyoming, as the House Republican Conference Chair, the third highest seat in the Republican Party. Ms. Cheney was ousted from this position, not because she was found out that there was a campaign uh, snafu that revealed millions of dollars of misused funds. She wasn't voted out because she had a torrid affair with some Hollywood hunk while she left her husband at home. She wasn't fired from the position because she had paid sex with prostitutes or because she lied under oath She's not even being let go because she was caught drinking and driving and caused an accident that injured several people. All of which, by the way, have happened to other Republican Party representatives. No, Liz Cheney was let go and relieved of her duties because she said the election was not rigged. The vote of the new president was not stolen and the former president needed to be impeached for his actions on January 6th, and she voted to do so. She was relieved from her duty of responsibility to the people because she wanted to tell the truth and do the right thing and was not afraid to speak up about it. Now, you need to know on the onset that I am not a fan of Liz Cheney. I will hold my opinions to myself about how I feel about her father and some of her voting positions. However, when we have moved to a place in society where we remove people from position because they are courageous enough to tell the truth, we are beginning to deteriorate as a society. The thing about this is that the truths she's talking about aren't really hard truths to face. This is easy, low-hanging fruit. The election was not stolen. Somebody lost. That's not controversial. That can be proven. But the Republican culture, as it is right now, has decided to cancel Liz Cheney because she wants to do the right thing. Cancel culture, my brothers and sisters, is a current thing in our society that they call cancel culture is a form of ostracizing someone and creating ways to thrust them out of social and professional circles. To be canceled is to be a part of a whirlwind process where efforts are made not only to call you out for certain behaviors, but to actually forget that you exist to remove you from a place of relevance or involvement in the circles of discussion. Cancel culture happens in social media, it happens online, and it happens in person. The reasons for someone being canceled can be something that a person said or did, a comment or remark that has been made, but you can also be canceled because people disagree with you meaning that you have said or done something that doesn't have to be offensive. It can just be a different opinion than somebody else's. We're not talking about boycotting. We're not talking about peaceful protests. We're talking about cancel culture, which is something different. We're not talking about moving the needle to change things for better for society. We're talking about literally making people irrelevant for their position. People will attempt to cancel you because they don't agree with you. People will try to cancel you because they are trying to silence your voice. People will try to cancel you because they don't want you to have any more influence than you already have, and they will make efforts to vilify you in the process. Why am I mentioning this? 
because the world we live in is moving more and more towards a place of creating distance than trying to find ways to work together. The world in which we exist sees creating otherness rather than togetherness as solution because things have become more and more about power than about people. But most importantly, what we will see in a little while is that this cancel culture is not new. It's an old creation. But regardless of what others may try to cancel you from, God operates in ways that help us to see that we don't have to engage in the deterioration of cancel culture. And no matter how much others try to stop what you were doing and stop what you were trying to do, that the Lord is able to make a way for